If you've seen any of my videos, you'll know I tend to prefer building as much from scratch as I can, or close enough to it that I have an intimate understanding of how it all works, or more importantly, how to fix it when it breaks. For this reason, I've avoided using Home Assistant to manage my smart home. I never had anything against Home Assistant, and I'd heard some neat things about it here and there, but I like tinkering with my own code and developing very use-case-specific solutions. That was all fine and nothing failed, but there were some things that I didn't have that I was equally not interested in creating, and I started to find that I didn't have the time to write as much of the core software as I initially intended. The other day, as I was watching the amazing and perhaps even superiorly bearded bearded Tinker, I came to realize I was a bit envious of his setup. He was having simply too much fun, and I needed to be a part of that. So, I got to work. I sacrificed one of my web servers that wasn't really doing much anyway and installed Home Assistant. I was initially going to cover the installation of Home Assistant, but in doing so the first time for research, it was so easy that I just decided to summarize the installation and link to the instructions in the description. It's very fast when you're using a Raspberry Pi 4. Seriously, it was so fast, it warrants sound effects. So, with the SD card imaged and installed in the Pi, I flipped the power on and instantly had Home Assistant. It quickly detected most of my devices, which I didn't even bother to screen capture because, well, I hadn't quite realized how many devices I'd accumulated over the last couple of years. The installation of Home Assistant, from the moment I made the decision to the moment I logged into it for the first time, took no more than 20 minutes. Setting up all of my relays, dimmers, sensors, cameras, and custom thermostats took almost three days. This is a quickly cobbled together overview dashboard of the system, and I'm still missing four relays that weren't powered on at the time, my custom roller shade controller, and there's a small bug in my custom thermostat that's preventing me from updating the high temperature, which I'll probably have sorted by the time you see this video. I am thrilled with how easy Home Assistant was to integrate with my custom devices. That actually took away all the pieces that I didn't want to deal with involving updating my touchscreens. Oh, and the touchscreens only required a single line of code in the X Auto Start to run Chromium in kiosk mode, so it took all of three minutes to do that remotely while I waited for other things. So, now that I have Home Assistant, I have removed some of the dread and reluctance to continue building my other custom devices, as well as tinkering with the Shelly devices I adore and use so much. That means I can proceed with some other builds soon, and I have some more Raspberry Pi Pico Ws on the way to make some new lighting effects and something involving stepper motors. I might do some videos on simple automation scripts like this one that I've set up to run small secondary heaters in various rooms where I have these small Govi sensors, and if that's something you'd be interested in seeing or you have something you'd like to see me cover on my Home Assistant, let me know in the comments. I am very happy with this installation. It allows me to forget the stuff I don't really care to write myself, and it allows me to continue being cloudless. In fact, this installation probably won't stay connected to the internet. It will go back on the private internet work that my smart devices run on. Eventually, once I have all of the Shelly Pro 4s I need to do the final conversion of my low voltage system, the entire relay part of the smart system will live on an entirely wired network, physically isolated from the internet by my serial communication device. This may seem overly cautious to a lot of people, and I don't expect everyone to follow my architecture by any means, but I never have to ask the question, could it be hacked from across the street? I was a war driver in college. I could have done bad things and probably never been caught. I didn't, but that doesn't mean others won't, especially in an increasingly automated world. It may be overly cautious, but that's okay because it gives my brain the feeling of security, which is what security is. I'm fairly certain I can't be hacked, and I'm even more certain my preparedness is beyond an attacker's level of interest or motivation to attack me. If anyone is interested in knowing more about my serial communications bridge that isolates all the things that can physically execute tasks on my network, again, let me know in the comments. I have a layered model for security that is a little different than most, I think, but I believe it's effective. If you don't think it's effective, leave me a comment and tell me why. I'd be happy to have someone spot a hole in my approach so I can patch it with concrete. 
Well, I realize this was more of an update than anything instructional, but I do hope you enjoyed it all the same, and if you did, of course, please give me a thumbs up. I'll be working on some custom RGB LED lighting in the next video, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring smarter circuits.